All right, for number 10, we have a tree diagram. See, we have my good guy, Carl, who has three brown socks, okay, and four black socks in his drawer. He takes two socks at random from the drawer. Two socks at random. Okay, we need to complete the tree diagram. So let's go in order, see? For example, up here, also I'm gonna explain the tree diagram a little bit, what goes on behind it, etc. see? So up on this first set, see, focus on what I'm drawing now in green. Just focus on this, forget the rest, okay? So this is the first sock he takes, okay? As it says up here, the, the first sock he takes, he can either pick brown or black. So initially, there are three brown socks, that's where this three comes from, and there are four black socks, that is where this four comes from, see? And so that is why the three is there, that is why the four is there. Why is the seven there? Because the total amount of socks is seven. How do you know? Well, you have three, three brown, just three black, that gives you seven, oh, fuck, sorry, four black, and that gives you seven total socks, okay? So that's where the seven comes from. All right, I know for some of you this might be kind of duh, but it's good to know later to understand why the seven changes to a six. Interesting. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. And the last thing I'm going to mention, okay, before we move on, whoops, I erased this by accident, is that this probability plus this probability equals one. Okay, that is something that always, always has to happen. This plus this equals one. Every sort of like stem, so this one in red or this one in brown or tan has to equal one. So this plus this, for example, actually I should use red. This plus this, how much does it give you? It also gives you one. Oh, interesting. Okay. And so there is some, those are like the rules of the tree diagram. See, as long as you keep those three rules in mind, the thing that it adds up to one in every one of the stems, um, the thing that this gets subtracted by one because one event follows the other, that kind of stuff is what you need to know or keep in mind, see? So, um, yeah, we completed or we understood much better what is going on for the tree diagram. What we need to fill out is this stuff on the bottom, see? And so if on the bottom, I pick the black one, see? How many black ones do I have left? Well, if I used to have three brown and four black, okay? For the path, like initially, for the path on the bottom, I now have three brown and three black. Okay, so if I have three brown and three black after this first step, cierto? after this first step, that means that down here for black, I'm gonna have three out of six, and for brown, I will also have three out of six. And there, that is part A, I completed the tree diagram. Okay, now it gets a little more juicy. See, for part B, we need to find the probability that Carl takes two socks of the same color. Okay, so when we're talking about probabilities, you need to consider the scenarios that can occur. Okay, so scenarios that can occur for same color. I either pick a, either pick brown, brown, either pick black, black. There's another scenario that confirms that Carl takes two socks of the same color. So what is our probability that Carl picks brown, brown, and probably that Carl picks black, black? See, that is sort of my approach, okay? But, but, I will push you to do the following, okay? A lot of people have trouble understanding when to add probabilities and when to multiply them, okay? So I will first say this. If it says and, I mean, if you think in and, then you will multiply. If you think in or, you will add. And so if I really, really force myself to use that language, the probability that Carl takes two socks of the same color, thinking of the scenarios, he either first takes brown and then brown, or first takes black and then black, okay? 
And so really take a second and look at those words there. See, we have and. Oops, it's not letting me. Whoops, maybe now it works. And or and. Okay, so now we're going to turn those words into math. Okay, so probably that he first takes brown is right here. See, so probably he first takes brown is going to be three out of seven. And it's a multiply. And then another brown, which is here, is going to be two over six. Or we're going to add first takes black, which I will do it in ah, whatever. I'll go with pink. Okay. First takes black. And then another black, which is three over six. Okay. So if I look at it that way, now it makes a lot more sense. Okay. So here in red, I will have uh, 3 over 7 times 2 over 6. If I multiply, I multiply straight across. So 3 times 2 is 6. 7 times 6 is 42. Okay. And on the right side, I have 4 times 3, which is 12. Divided by 7 times 6 is 42. Okay. When you are adding, um, when you are adding, the only thing that matters is that the denominators are the same. So if the denominators are the same, this suddenly turns into 6 plus 12 divided by 42. Okay, the denominators do not add. They just need to be the same for you in order to be able to combine them, okay? So 6 plus 12 is 18 divided by 42, whatever that is, okay? That is 3 over 7, which is pretty much 0 0.429, which in decimal, or parent I mean in parentheses, la 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 la, <laughs> In percent is 42.9 percent okay any of those three options uh, will give you the answer see i mean we'll give you full credit so that is right there whoops not what i intended to do so that is right there for part b all right either three over seven 0 0.429 or 42.9 percent how did i get that decimal i just divided uh, 3 by 7. There it is. Three significant figures. Ta-da. Okay, that is part B. See? For part C, we need to f uh, find out that given, okay, given that Carl has two socks of the same color, find the probability that he has two brown socks. Alright, so the sort of cool thing about the given probability is that it, um... Do I have more space down here? Damn. All right, I can do it up here maybe. Yeah. So the cool thing about given is that it sort of restricts the bag where you're taking them from. See? So it, it makes like your area of possibilities much lower than before. Okay? Now, um, let's pull up our formula booklet. Let's look for a given probability. And it's not there. See? Another name, name they can put for it is conditional. So this conditional probability is the same as given. All right. It's important to get to know your formal booklet. This is basically given. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go ahead and write that formula now. We have a, a vertical line B equals P A, the symbol B divided by PB. Now, uh, what does this mean in words? Okay. P line B is going to be probability of A given B. Okay. Probability of A given B equals probability of A and B. Okay. And so that symbol here is for and. A way that I like to memorize it is that this N looks a little bit like that. So N and N is and. Okay. This dash here is for given, okay? Is getting divided by probability of B. Okay, so that is like putting these symbols into words, okay? Let me just highlight some more stuff. And then and, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, and now that we have it defined like this, we just kind of have to figure out what is A, what is B, but much more importantly, which is the key thing about conditional probability, is how did my universe of options get restricted? 
Okay, that is the biggest question you can do. All right, how do I leave this a little more clear? If you do a quick Venn diagram, okay, of your A and your B, for example, all right, you have these two big circles and probability of A given B means that you are looking at the chance that you get A here in red. Whoa, how the hell did I just do that? All right, so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> probability of A given B is what is the chance that you roll here in red given that you're picking here in, B, here in blue. And so you're not pick like, for example, this is probably you have A given B, see? You're picking from the blue, hoping that you get red. And so this is, your universe is what's in yellow. See, you're picking from what's in yellow, hoping that you get red, okay? Which is much, much different than I say the probability of say A and B, okay? Which means that here, in the same Venn diagram, okay? You are picking from you are picking from everything and hoping that you get red. Okay? And so here is without conditional probability, here is with conditional probability. See? So you're the universe you're picking from, what I drew in yellow, gets restricted. Okay, so what am I restricting here? Well, here it says, given that Carl has two socks of the same color. Okay, so A and B is going to be the same color. I uh, find that probably that he has two brown socks. And so suddenly, we do not care about black socks. We, all, of this, all of this part of the, my universe does not matter anymore. See, I am only focused on brown socks. So if I'm only focused on brown socks, that means I am going down through this line that's in red. See? So I would go ahead and put uh, 3 over 7 times 2 over 6. And since I am restricting my universe, down here is my restriction, okay? What is my re restriction? That I have to go through the path on the top initially. I have to go through the path on the top. And the path on the top has a probability of 3 over 7. So if I have to go through the path on the top, I'm forgetting the path on the bottom. My restriction is that this has to be 3 over 7. And so that is, I know it's, I know conditional probability is confusing, okay? But the key idea is, how do my options get restricted? And so this goes away with this. I end up with, quite simply, 2 over 6, which is 1 third, which is the same as 0 0.333 or 33.3%. All right, yeah, that is part C. So um, the key things for number 10 is understanding the tree, tree diagram, the thing that these probabilities add up to one. Uh, understanding when the denominator gets subtracted by one, by one event to the next. And also da, 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 that condition, oh yeah, that and or or is multiply or add respectively, think in that language. And lastly, that conditional probability, the biggest thing you need to focus on is how it restricts your universe. I think this that I drew in yellow is a good example, see? For the example on the left, your normal one, you're picking from all of this box. In the right with conditional probability, you're picking only from this circle. It restricts where you pick from, basically. And that's why the denominator, which is like your total cases, is what gets played with. Ladies and gentlemen, that is for number 10.